What up brothers, it's Cliff King returning. Welcome back to my channel for the continuation of the top 15 countdown. I hope you've enjoyed the first two parts. If you haven't watched them, please go back and watch them because if not, this part might not make much sense to you. But not much more I can say. Let's crack on and continue with the countdown. At number five is the DX13 Battle Damage Terminator from T2. I'll show you the set. I'll tell you also included a sort of melted down version of the T1000 and this is the exclusive one that also had the T1000 Ed Sculpt. So that were a nice touch but that is actually in the box so I can't show you that. But I will tell you the stuff that it brought and the figure straight out of the box is probably still Octo's best example of on the DX figures. The two Ed Sculpts it brought were both amazing, really accurate. This one has uh, one purse eye. I don't know if it's still classed as purse because it's not parallel rolling. It has a light up eye on that. And then on the second sculpt, it does have the uh, purse eyes for there, the device to move that around. And the specially made body, which includes the battle damaged leg, as you see, still well articulated. Even up through the chest with the awesome looking battle damage. Just a really good uh, figure. When I reviewed it, I was actually buzzing about it because the battle damage on it were really realistic looking. It sort of took another step forward from the DX10, which I thought at the time was awesome. But then this like sort of when you see something better than what you already think's amazing, it does blow you away. Octo um, Enter Bay actually come out with a really good battle damage Terminator in one fourth scale, and that was the go-to Terminator. But I still think that this is the Terminator to get at one six scale. It's just really awesome. We'll show you how the head works in a minute. But just to go through what I included, it did have the Diorama DX style base, the sort of spike from the foundry, the grenades, the bandolier, the thumper. This time it has a battle damage stock, the head sculpt. I don't know which would class as the first sculpt or the second, but both are awesome. A good selection of hands, wrist peg, the um, battle damage lower arm section for his left arm, and then also another battle damage jacket with the arm cut away, and then obviously the bullet holes in the back. Also on this one I will say the outfit went back to the sort of pleather feel, where the DX10 included the... Uh, proper 100% leather this went back to the pleather it doesn't feel as good to my mind but it probably looks better in the scale it just falls a little bit more natural so that's another reason why I think this was an improvement I think together they do complement each other really nicely but because I sort of now prefer that head to the DX10's own head I normally display it uh, with that head so my set is normally fully damaged on that one and then semi damaged with that. That's how I like to display them. Also, I think that's the M16 rifle and the pistol, what I never mentioned before. So, yeah, really good set. And like I said, there was no, uh, no tinkering around with it needed. You didn't have to do any repaints on it, mod the body in any way, do anything to the outfit. It's just pretty perfect straight out of the box. The box itself were amazing. Like I said, everything included just made it a standard DX piece. Uh, just to show you how the head works, obviously this one has purrs, the back of the air comes away and then obviously you've got the joystick at the back which does move both eyes on this one. Oops, I'm getting in my own way here. So that works like that. And then this head, obviously same thing, the air comes off at the back, you can move you can move the, I'm trying to feel for a switch, just bear me one second, there's a switch which turns on the red light and then you need this instrument to move the eye. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I quite like where the eye is. If I were to turn it around, you see the eyes lit up and does look pretty beastly. So an awesome set, like I said, straight from the box, possibly Optoys' best figure, but it's not the highest in my countdown. So stick with me and we'll move on. At number five is the Diamond 5 Rallop. Let me look down him. This is one of the most recent ones that's been released, and obviously 
bears a striking resemblance to Wolverine. I would think it sold well, probably because of that fact. A lot of Marvel fans, if they wanted the cartoon version of Wolverine, would have gone for this. And it is a nice looking figure. Couple of little nitpicks with it. They started charging us for the, sort of putting them in a bigger box and charging us for the additional extra. So the uh, Acer Arts brought a torch chair, which I liked. This brought a wolf called Ghost. It is a nice addition, but when you work out the price before they added these to the price after, it's not really worth it. Another thing is, it's really hard, brittle polystone, I think. And as you see, it has an interchangeable lower jaw. When I actually fitted the closed jaw in mine, it actually snapped a couple of the teeth. So it is really brittle. So look out for that if you've not received it already. The extras you got though were pretty cool. See, it has the two sort of clawed weapons with the blood on them, the sort of sheaves that they go into, a canteen which is on the back of his belt, then he has the uh, strap, his sort of shoulder holster, has two speed loaders in there and the gun holds in there. Now I think that this started dying some hands that it were lent against so be careful with that as well if you decide to wear it because a lot of times these damn toys when they use the black the dye is still wet and can seep onto other things so be careful with that. The revolver, which were a nice touch, and then he has a couple of spare hands, one for holding the canteen, one for holding the gun, and then he has this hand, which has the blades in it, but also it has like a cartoonish blood drag. So that's quite cool as well. If he's in an action pose and you put those on, it does look pretty fresh. So it's a nice set all together. Like I said, it's what one at first wants to bump up in price, which I didn't really appreciate. The beauty of these figures were they were always around hundred pounds delivered to me. Now they're creeping up around the 150 mark. I'm thinking, fucking hell, they're getting into Hot Toys territory. So I hope that uh, I hope they book the trend on that soon. But I will say, I always collect them simply because I'm just trying to complete this line. So another one I liked, and that's why it made it to number five. Right at number four is the DX12 Batman. Now very different to the DX13 Terminator, where I said he's one of Hot Toys' most perfect figures straight out of the box. This is actually the opposite. It's not perfect out of box by a long stretch, but I've done that much work on this figure, bought that many extra accessories, different heads, modded heads, the armory head, empty cowls that never come with it, the Tony May long cape, the Tony May short cape, the Tony May head conversion with the squinting eyes, the Robbie the painter, the um, I think that were a recast mouth plate, I've just got fucking so much stuff with it. It's like two full sets, as you see, two full stands. I've got weapons on weapons in there. Two full belts, so the one with the stuff on it, the clean looking belt, two of these things. I've got a shaved down neck peg, if I want the Batman to have a shorter neck. That's been shaved down and modded. That's a proper length one, so that's a stock one. That's the original DX12 head with an armory mouth. I've got two sets of DX mouth plates, the armory mouth plates. I've just got so much stuff and this is why it ranks so high. Nearly every part of it, every part of what you're seeing on both figures has been modded by myself. There's actually a video on my channel showing at one point I had three of this figure and I modded them all, sold one. People have asked me, I've just bought a DX12, it don't look note like yours, can you tell me why it's different? And I think, Go and watch that video, you see everything I did to it, and people have copied it and done other stuff. There was another guy also on Sideshow Freaks, but his name slips me at the moment. He also modded his, and a lot of the mods that I did were like similar to his, if not exactly the same. Uh, so I probably got the similar results, but I mean, even the Bruce Wayne head has had a black face wash to give him the look as if he just took the cowl off, so still darker around the eyes, more shadow around the mouth sort of thing the armor has been steamed and basically shrunk down to the body the uh, belts have been stretched slightly the that's a stock glove with a wristband then them have all been shaved down the gauntlets have been stretched basically totally changed altogether like i said i do love as you see that one it's an awesome looking batman more from the Dark Knight Risers with the style of the gloves. 
but then I sometimes use this as a as a backup Batman in more action pack or as a half and half like I've got now so I don't really want a Bruce Wayne in a suit because I just find it a boring I, I could have that like the Hong Kong rescue scene with a cape off altogether uh, I thought I actually had one of the uh, the backpacks but I don't know where that's gone like I said with the, the emptied out cowl that he's holding I could have the sticky bomb gun in his hand so yeah just a really good set and that is what I love about it like I've said before not that it were perfect from the box because it weren't you've got to put the work in but then you get the rewards out so I think people have said to me before actually would you ever sell your DX12 and I think what the fuck could I sell it for how much would it be worth I don't know I ain't got a clue because you basically got two full figures although I've only got one box that's been modded by me it's got every conceivable extra you'd ever want to buy I think Tony May capes alone are about 40 or 50 quid so I think the armory head were about 50 or 60 quid with the armory mouth plates which is that's the armory head and one of the mouth plates then you got them two as well I think that's an armory face plate so I just wouldn't know what it'd be worth I just know it'd be worth a lot because it's worth a lot to me and if I was ever to sell it somebody would have to bust the bank to get it so that's why that figure is at number four it's not perfect from the box but it can be made to look badass and number four is the spade two nelson this was another one it had already been released when i started collecting these figures so i had to pay a little bit over the odds for not a massive amount because a friend of mine on facebook sold it to me kindly so i was buzzing to get it again because i had chased it for a few weeks maybe a month um and really like the figure this is one that i still really love from the head sculpt it's clearly uh, a replica of or a caricature of vinnie jones very in theme even with the clothes being worn and the uh, the weapons that come with it she has a baseball bat with a blood spatter on and then this version has the pump action shotgun which is nice and then he's got the baseball style jacket with the hoodie hanging out didn't bring a lot with him as you can see just one spare hand with the uh, sort of the whiskey flask it's in the faux leather and a pair of shades he does also have a watch and the uh, necklace with a crucifix on it and then again a couple of years later when this is sold through become hard to get they released another version so it was the spade 2 exclusive again toy fair from singapore or hong kong the uh, released at the same price but i think they bumped the price up a little bit because they were a limited run and you'd have to be at the toy fair to get them this time it didn't ship with the shotgun it had the uh, the fuel canister instead which is a nice accessory but a little bit confusing why they still give you the trigger hand because it doesn't have a gun i wish they'd have included a desert eagle with this but they didn't they give you the middle finger hand a watch again the gold uh, drink uh, whiskey flask sorry and they gave him a gold baseball bat this time with the uh, baseball transfers on instead of the blood spatter and again the shades and an even bigger crucifix necklace both really cool looking but because i think that the exclusive is just a cash grab i've always preferred the original version again it helps that not everybody has it in the collection even the uh, loyal gangsters kingdom collectors you'd normally see the exclusive one but not so much the original one again though whichever one you get i think you've got a cool figure definitely one of my favorites in this line but like i said in the rankings that i'm doing i'm actually scoring the original tour spades at number three is the rocky balboa figure from the original rocky movie by johnny chunkinman this is the only custom piece that i uh, entertain in my collection not to say that it's the best you can buy because that might not be the case but it's definitely from the film that i love the most i sometimes flip flop around where i think oh that's my favorite film or that is or sometimes i feel like watching one film or another but this is consistently around there i think it's one of the only perfect films made in my opinion and by that i mean every scene has meaning every scene has something that entertains you or makes you think and i don't think there's no wasted footage every scene in the original rocky is just key to the story development the character arc or pushing the story along and very rarely does that happen for me in film i'm very blasé towards films it's like i've seen it all before that's how i feel some films i find and they blow my mind 
recent films, I'm thinking like Gone Girl, I thought were a really good film, Gone Baby Gone, stuff like that. But nothing, nothing really, I fucking hell, that were amazing. I always go back to Rocky, the original Rocky and the Rocky franchise in general. I, I just love them. The feel good factor, seeing the man struggle, the chance in a million man. I just, I just love everything about it. I think Stallone is so underrated when it comes to his writing ability, his acting ability and his longevity. I think people overlook him and go towards other people and I do myself. But uh, I think what we saw with the uh, Creed at the Oscars last year or this year, when he got overlooked for the best supporting actor, I thought were well, Travis Day and I think the industry in general thought the same. I thought it was more than his time. I think the role he played... Again, obviously, Rocky in the Creed movie, I thought he deserved Best Supporting Actor. But I will say I didn't see every other film, so I can't uh, I can't say that with any, any great conviction. On to the figure. And another reason I love this figure is how I acquired it. Now, I can't go too much into that, but I'll just say it was sent to me directly by Johnny himself. Massive thank you to him for sending it me. The one I actually reviewed wasn't mine. This one arrived after. Uh, so massive thank you to him for sending me this figure I do love it, it's one of them as well when I got it, I kept posing it I kept thinking I want to get sort of that pose where it's at the top of stairs I know the the scope doesn't lend to that pose but I use the Batman base normally got him with his arms aloft that, uh, I don't know probably one of the most famous movie stills of all time that accomplishment on his face and the stood at top of the stairs at the Philadelphia Museum I just think it's so key and it's got so much deep meaning when you think about what the film is or what what the average every man's life is. It's just a constant struggle till you get that one second of fucking, I don't know, uh, fame maybe or accomplishment and then after that it's downhill from there sort of thing and I just think that scene is so key to the film. The figure itself... I, I like the amount of love that Johnny put into it. I showed you the box at first. Most customizers won't even send you a box like that. So that is the first thing. To put the print on the front and the back like he did, the good quality, the foam housing, could have stopped there and just put an average figure in. Put a top figure in, they could have stopped there. What did he do? He makes the meat, which again is a touch in its own. That's the outside and then the inside again. Awesome paintwork. The hook. Two different lengths of the piping you get. The concrete style base which holds it, which has got some right weight in it. It could have stopped there. Did it? No, we thought, fuck that. I make the glass with the eggs in. It's another key scene from the film. Again, it's a right touch. The blooded wraps on that hand. The clear ones on that. One version included the dog, which you didn't have to do, but were a right touch again. The uh, certificate that comes with it. As you see, mine was the last one, 35 of 35 of the regular version. I said my version doesn't include but Kiss the Dog, but I have seen it, and it is a right touch, a really good piece. Awesome work, I say. You included that for me as well, everybody got that. And then again, the booklet. Look how thick that is. Like I've showed in this countdown, only Hot Toys that I know have done it before Johnny does it, and I think he does it with every figure. And it just gives you an insight into work that goes in. The different pieces you see i don't want to flick through all the books it's in my review it just shows you the work from start to finish the awesome tailoring the sculpt without paint so just flick through a little bit so yeah i think it's just a culmination of how i acquired it that i love it it's from my favorite film of all time i think the sculpt is really really good i will say it's not perfect i'm not even going to lie and say it is perfect but it's not far off as you see, from certain angles it does look stronger than others. Like I say, it's definitely good enough for everybody who ever sees this figure to know exactly who it is. So, do like that. Sometimes I wish the body would have had a double bend elbow, just so you can get the defending hand a little bit tighter. But again, not a problem because the scale, the proportions are right. The tracksuit bottoms could have been just slashed off at the bottom like his were. They weren't uh, seamed, but I understand they'd done the seam so it done all fray. So I understand that. The sculpted converse it did include the stand, which most customizers don't do. Just a really good figure from a really 
awesome film and I love it and that is why it made number three in my figure collection. At number three it's the Spade 5 Baron figure. Again I'm lucky enough to get the variant which is the one on the left with a red coat. As you see it's based on Jude Law. Just an awesome figure this. The accessories it brought was stunning. You've got about three different options for how you display him. He has the rolled up poncho you see on the side of there that is all wired so you can have that over him in sniper mode with the hood up and then it's like I said because it's wired you could have it all blowing the wind it just looks really good. Anybody who ever um, asks about tailoring on the damn toys one of the things that sort of one of the examples I would give to show just how good they are is the coat on either two of these. The sort of texture and styling on the uh, walking jacket on that and then the faux leather, the padded nature and how natural that one looks up to the fur collar that's sort of suede lined underneath that it's got a military style jumper with a zip up collar all round it's just awesomely tailored and like I said with the poncho on as well it just looks badass again they're different enough to complement each other and make it worth having each the boots he has wheat on the right and they are actually ox blood on the left. The colour of the shades is a sort of a, an orange tint, is a more pink. The pistols, as you see on there, and he has them. I thought they were different actually, but they're not the same on this one. The colour of the poncho is different, is as a warmer like a browns and reds, whereas is greens and grey. So obviously the jacket's different. Both has the Bluetooth headset, the different iPhones, this has got the gold on the back, this has got the silver, they have a set of gloves each and then some bare hands, he's actually wearing his headset as you can see it's sticking in his ear under his hat, both obviously has the Jack Wolf skin hat, it's just a badass figure, I just like everything about it, again the actor that they chose to cast in this role I think fits it really well. Um, Bit of a nightmare to balance sometimes, I'll just mention that because of the shape of the walking boots and also um, the bag that it comes with is massive, that will fit his sniper rifle in there, as you see, that's quite a big bit. The uh, tripod comes out bottom of the foregrip on that, the clip comes out, I think the uh, sights are removable, the lens caps for that, and like I said it does fit into his bag, this one's got the bag on the back and then it's got the... Um, the poncho strapped to it so it's just a beastly looking figure even down to the two pens in the uh, pocket yeah just really love that one and that is why it got in at number three at number two by stone collectibles is the mike tyson youngest heavyweight champion version it is one of the limited to 300 toy fair exclusives that brought the uh, real leather gloves the punch ball, the leather head guard protector, the boots. It uh, really is a nice set. Two head sculpts, as you see. That's the relaxed head sculpt. Looking down. The real gloves. Signature shorts. And then the sculpted boots. This version has the uh, faux leather boots. Up into the foul protector. The Everlast on it. The wrapped hands and then the head guard with the uh, more aggressive head sculpt with the black gum shielding. See the speedball again is Everlast, real wood base as you see and then a name plaque base down here. Right, let's uh, the track suit as you see, the jogger suit, the belt which was garbage to be honest, some sculpted gloves, some sculpted feet, I don't know what they're for and then some open wrapped hands. Now you're probably thinking saying Rick you've never done a video showing us your two Mike Tyson bodies why is that? Simple fact is because I've only just received that body. Why have I received that body? You guys are probably going to know this figure is not perfect. It looks pretty perfect and I've took some awesome pictures with it and loved it from the day I got it but we all know it's got a fucking underlying problem. The rubber corrodes on the body. So 
I received a figure from Storm on release which was paint damaged. It had got rub marks and it had also got some bubbling skin on the back of its leg. So I got in touch with a guy who managed to pick it up for me. I sent it back to him, he took it to Storm Collectibles and then they sent me this body back. Which has been fine for probably a year or however long I've had it. And then recently I've got it stood on my shelf and it were unposed. It were a pose exactly the same as that. And I just started having a look, thought I might pose it up, get it ready for this collection. And I thought, what the fuck is happening to his shoulders? I get that under light, his shoulders started cracking. They've dried out and started cracking. So I thought, fucking hell, what is that about? Straight in touch with Stone Collectibles. This is a a Tyson. I think uh, you know me from YouTube. You know I've had a figure sent before, but the one that you've sent me is started cracking. What do I do with it? He says, give me your address and we'll send you out replacement parts or a replacement body. I says, well, I know you send out arms and legs. That's not going to be no help to me because it's actually there. This was about two weeks ago. So they sent me a confirmation back saying, your spare stuff is in the post. While it was stood there, again, it weren't in a post anything like this. In space or a week, that is what's happened, and that is while it were unposed. So it went from being perfect to over two weeks, it went like that. About a week after they said they'd sent the body, they did, I did receive a completely new body with, I don't know why they did it, it had got the, it were full body with these legs on, and then a spare set of arms which I've put on obviously this is mint condition because it's only just arrived it's the new body the updated one they've done I don't know if they've changed the paint or the rubber or silicon whatever it is so that is a mint condition one they also sent me a spare set of leg skins so if the leg skins were to go on that I could replace them obviously I haven't got a spare pair of arms also I'd replace that one but I don't mind, this one is now fucked. I can articulate this one as much as I want because it can't get any more fucked than it already is. But I will say, some of them reviewers that are out there telling us that the problem is the joints, the elbows, the knees, bullshit. Stick with your uncle clipper because he'll tell you. The problem was always the rubber body on this. And as you see, mine were perfect for years. And like I said, over the course of a week, it dried out and cracked. But Storm, to the credit, had already sent me this body out because of that tiny little crack up there. So you're probably thinking, of a figure as faulty as that, why the fuck are you ranking it number two from all your collection with all these great figures in? Simply because this is the figure that sort of takes the first step towards my sort of retirement figure, which as most of you will know is Cassius Clay or Muhammad Ali. Once that's out, then I fucking have no need to collect another figure. I know that's coming soon and I know it's coming from Storm Collectibles. I hope the body that they put out will stand the test of time because I can't bear to get an awesome version of that figure and then it break me heart and fucking go to shit like that other Tyson body has. I hope this one lasts a lot longer because when it is in good condition, it's a fucking awesome looking figure. The muscle definition, the way it articulates, the head sculpts, the stuff that it brings, even down to the leather gloves, it's just a right touch. It's a figure again, when I walk into it, it's one of the first things I always look at. I don't know why it is, but I just do. You might say, well, if I had that figure in my collection, it wouldn't be getting that out of mine if it fucking falls apart. But like I said, Storm have done what I've asked them to do, so I can't criticise them as a company. But like I said, that is what could happen to your body, depending on which body you get. But anyway, Tyson, when he's in full working order, is a booster of figure. So that is where he gets to number two. Number two from the Gangster's Kingdom line is the memories version of Marshall, the fat man. Show you. Just a really cool looking piece. Went to a fat suit on this one, obviously. Made the body a little bit smaller, so it just stands in really good scale with the rest of the collection. It's uh, set on John Goodman, as you can see. Sort of from his role in the Big Lebowski, with a flat top hairdo. Uh, Bit of a beard going on. See, he has got his glasses on, but he looks fresh even without them. As you can see, he's got his uh, cigarette in hand with the smoke effect going up, which is a nice touch. Comes with a mini Uzi, and he does have a shoulder holster inside there for the Uzi, which is a nice touch. 
not a lot of stuff with him but uh, I do like how it all stands a couple of spare chubby little hands with a ring on it just a little flick knife and the glasses that you've just seen him wearing also a watch so not a load of stuff compared to some of the other ones again it is a memories version so it's not from the main series so you wouldn't get a playing card with this one but it's just really cool one of them you get him in a nice little pose and he just looks I don't know like a stroke of genius that they've cast this actor in this part of the story so I really do like that one and it's only been pipped to the top by one very special one so you clever guys guessed it at number one it's the BVS Batman. Only just come out, but I've tried not to let the novelty value sway me. But there's just so much to love about the figure. You see, I got the set with the tech cowl and the sniper rifle. Even a standard version brings a lot of stuff, but the main uh, the main course is definitely the figure itself. The awesome body that they used for it, the awesome suit that they've saw. Sort of made particularly for this figure with the working muscle section just awesome it's a badass batman in the film but hot toys have just done the work really well the face plates are astounding you can tell it's ben affleck underneath the sculpt it's just awesome <laughs> there's not much more i can say other than that i've put plenty of video up and the interest has been really good on it i think the review's done about twenty-five thousand views something like that so you know a figure's good when people are coming back. The modification of it was only very simple, very easy, very surface mods. A little bit of glue here, a little bit of glue there. A couple of little nitpicks out of the box. Obviously the bat symbol rides a little bit too high, a standard. Uh, the sleeves roll up a little bit. The, the pants sort of drop down a little bit. But it's all, uh, it's all fixable, and when it's fixed, it's one of them figures, regardless how you pose it, it just looks fucking amazing. Yeah, good look at the pose. It's pretty much just in a backhand position, going to throw the three batarangs that he's holding in the one hand. So a bit of rotation through the waist, he's just about to launch them off. Bit of a niggle with the cape, but again, that's pretty fixable. Uh, show you the things it includes. The uh, BVS style stand with the symbol in the middle and a kickstand behind the sniper rifle with mine the uh, grapple gun with the different fittings that will fit in the end the kryptonite grenade launcher the branding iron got another batarang the interchangeable mouth plates the great grenades one open one closed the different eye pieces so it can be looking in different directions plenty of hands for the accessories he brings and the tool for switching out the eyes and a set of wrist pegs but like I say all the stuff there sort of fails in comparison to it. just the awesome sculpt work on the body and the upper part of the outfit just looks fucking mean and menacing I think a lot of people will probably guess I put this at number one I don't know if it'll fade over time maybe it will I don't know but as it stands now I just could not find a problem with it or no way that I would say yeah, that stops my enjoyment of that figure. It looks fucking awesome. I do check out other people's videos and poses of it. And I'm always coming back and slightly adjusting a little arm twist here. A little neck lean there. A little rotation. A little knee movement. Just to get the awesome pose. Pretty simple pose. But like I said, I think you'd agree. It still looks pretty stunning. So as my collection stands in 2016. Before I do a collection reset. That is how I would rank my figures. I say a lot of people have said, do you know you've done two number 11s? I'd say, just listen to what I actually said. I don't just flick through to look at my poses. It's a dual countdown. So I've gone from 15 to 1 on Optoys and Enter Bay and all that sort of stuff. And then 15 to 1 on the Gangster's Kingdom. So at number 1 from the Gangster's Kingdom line is the Ace of Hearts Billy figure. And just show you up and down him. Awesome set and an awesome likeness, awesome tailoring, just pretty much a perfect figure. It brought everything you see with it, so we're talking obviously the awesome outfit including the hat, the toothpick, beautifully tailored suit and coat that is wired around the edge, satin lined, the blood spattered hammer, a set of clean hands as regards uh, ungloved should I say, with the rings on them, moving down. Again, awesome tailored trousers, 
beautiful looking shoes set of gloved hands that's his trigger holding right hand the gun is fully working if I do to pull that out the bullets will tip out the speed loader and then you got a set of feet so you didn't get the boots but you got the trousers the shirt the hood the hands you didn't get the body or the head inside but you did get the amazing wooden torture chair with the faux leather straps it feels heavy in hand it feels top quality and as a set i just think it looks very intimidating very menacing for an ace of a particular suit be it the arts he had to be special and he definitely were so as it stands this is my favorite gangsters kingdom figure at the moment now i could do the collection video again in a month's time and it could be totally different but like i said it were hard to choose i pretty much just took out which i thought was my favorite at that point then the next one the next one the next one and made the list like that but uh, not much more i could say i think the people who have got this figure will really like it i will just say it's uh, got the caricature likeness of Robert, I think it's Robert Nepper, who played Teabag in uh, Prison Break. I forget which uh, film this actual outfit's from. Somebody sent me a picture of a day of Robert Nepper from a film, I can't remember the name of the film. But yeah, just a really nice looking figure. Poses really well. I had a really good time um, reviewing it. So that is why it's my number one figure from the Gangster's Kingdom from Damn Toys. Right guys, so, like I said, it was an odd decision to put those all in order. I hope you've enjoyed the series of videos. I hope you've watched them all. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave some comments. Just tell me where you would put uh, figures if you were to put them, if they're in your collection, and you would rank them in my collection. Just for a bit of fun, so to speak. Like I said, I know not everybody's going to agree, and not everybody's going to have all the figures that I've got. So, I know I'm lucky to even have a lot of these. Uh, and I do appreciate being able to get them. Uh, not much more I can say. I will just finish off by saying every figure I've put in this countdown and the ones that didn't even make it, there is complete reviews up on my channel. So please opt back and find them. They're pretty easy to find. I have a go to my video section and just have a troll through or just type in. Just start if you type with the Clipper King and then the figure you're looking for and you should be able to find some footage on it. But like I say, thanks for joining me again, guys. But for now... I'm out of here.